And welcome to my new let's play of Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest. This is considered a classic game, and I'd say for good reason. Oddly enough, I don't really get into it though, because I have weird childhood memories of this game. But we jump straight into the first level, Pirate Panic, which actually is set immediately after DKC1. Another thing I need to address, why are we skipping a game? Uh, the reason is because I like this game better, and two, I have more of a reason to play this game. Basically, I have weird childhood memories of this game because at the time, I was going through some really tough times. Uh, redundant wording. Um, yeah, not a good mind frame to be playing a really tough game in. So I kind of wanted to do this project just to see if I could sort of change my mind on the game a little bit. Now we're flying through the level, I'm not explaining anything, but I'll explain things in a moment. Like this, this is a bonus barrel. Well, you can't actually see it, but take my word for it, it's a bonus barrel. These are little mini challenges that you get coins for. And we need coins for 100%. In this game, though, 100% is actually called 102%. Uh, this is Rambi the Rhinoceros. He actually has a charge move if you hold down A, which is what that giant arrangement of bananas spelling on A was for. Going over other controls, Y attacks, B jumps, a select switches Kongs. Um, a does, a tr does like a special, depending on what kind of character setup you have. If you have an animal buddy, it uses one of their special moves. If you just have Diddy and Dixie alone, you have a team-up attack, which is actually really good. Not an attack, team-up move. Tag move. I don't know what to call it. Uh, these are Kremlings. They are the enemies of the game. That's a 1-up. No, that's like a 3-up. Red balloons are like 1-ups. I think green balloons are like 3-ups, and like blue balloons are 5-ups. Don't quote me on that, because I do not actually remember. It's been forever. That was actually the first level. If you have an exclamation point and a DK symbol, it means you 100% at that level, so... Uh, Kong letters do not actually matter. Thank goodness, because some of them suck. So, Dixie has a hair spin if you press Y in mid-air. Uh, so that's another reason I like this game better, is because Dixie feels a lot better as a character. She's a lot more... <laughs> she makes the game a lot more playable, let's put it that way. I mean, yeah, it's sort of like how I wanted to play Metroid Zero Mission, see if I could change my mind on the game. But this is on a much, like, deeper level than that. It's not just like, eh, Metroid's okay. But it's like, this game, I had a lot of, like, really bad childhood memories, because I was just not in the right frame of mind to be playing it at the time. But I was also too stubborn to just, like, give it up. <laughs> Uh, full disclosure, I tend to be very stubborn in gaming, and real life, to be fair. Like, trying to do a homework project for like 10 hours, and then giving up after like, another 5. <laughs> Just being like, screw that, not worth it. This game has lag, by the way. Uh, FYI. So the climbing mechanics are like every DK game ever. Uh, huh. I did not expect to hit that gun head. So I did a practice one, by the way, so this also isn't blind uh, entirely. I'm taking little chunks of the game at a time. If you're wondering how I'm actually approaching this game from the standpoint of let's playing it, I'm basically breaking it down into certain chunks. Like, last night I played through, like, the first, like, third of the game. So, like, before the next video, I'm gonna play through the next third. Dixie actually holds, uh, projectiles, not projectiles, holds objects differently than Diddy. She holds them, uh, above her head, Diddy holds them in front of him. So this challenge is actually inherently easier as Dixie than Diddy. The one option is you can just climb up and take him out that way, but hey, this works too. I'm not complaining. So this game ramps up pretty quickly in difficulty, so if you think, wow, you have a lot of lives already. No. We don't. This game is gonna make us lose all of our lives very fast. Grab the stars. So, uh, my strat is to climb up this one. Here. Get th this one, then go down. And then go across. And then repeat. 
basically working your way to the center. That's my strategy. Because you have to actually climb to the top anyway, I should probably point that out, that the DK coin, not the DK coins, the... I think they're called the K Rool coins or Kremlin coins or something, I don't remember. In any case, they actually have fixed uh, spawn points, so you might as well try to finish the bonus level near where the spawn point is. So now we've actually seen both of their uh, ending animations, conveniently. This is actually Kong... Co not Kong College, this is Monkey Museum where you can actually get hints for where things are hidden, if I'm not mistaken. We don't need hints, we have the internet. And yeah, I did actually 100% this game as a kid, which also probably wasn't the best choice. Uh, this seems to be random, but for some reason, like, three out of four times that I've seen, because this is actually a second take on this video, uh, it's always that third barrel, for some reason. Uh, on my previous run, it was the second barrel. But, yeah, on my practice run, it was the third barrel, and the less play I was watching, it was actually the third barrel too, so I don't know if that's just got a high probability. I missed the DK coin. I totally went right, right by the DK coin. Okay, going back, uh, the DK coin is actually a- Oh, I almost just killed myself. Also, by the way, Kongs only have one hit in this game, so be very, very careful. Like, very careful. So, you can use these hairspin to speed that process up a lot. Uh, the music in this game is done by David Weiss, who... Or Weiss, Weiss, I don't know how it's pronounced. Who is best known for his work on, well, the DKC games. I think he also did, uh... I think he also did... Tropical Freeze... And, uh... 64? 64 might have been Grant Kirkhope, I don't remember. David Weiss and Grant Kirkhope both actually did the music for Ukulele, which released earlier this year, and... Uh... Reviews are all over the place, and it makes me sad, because I wanted the game to be really good, and it's just kind of in the middle. I hear it's a solid game if you like Banjo, but also that's an invincibility barrel, it makes you invincible, hence the name. We need it to actually get to the next bonus level, it's actually up here, these... I think they're called Crushers? Uh, yeah, you can't defeat them, so that the only way to actually get up there is to actually use the uh, invincibility. Yeah, the music is really good and iconic in these games. By the way, I also need to address that this game was made by Rare. Back when Rare was a second party developer for Nintendo. Before Nintendo sold Rare to Microsoft. So for a while this game couldn't even be bought on the eShop. Fun fact. Lockjaw's Locker, not really my favorite level. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Now, if I'm not mistaken, there's only one bonus level here? Or am I, or am I mistaken? I could've sworn there's only one bonus level. Whoa. Okay, that was a waste of a barrel. Swimming controls. B swims up. But like Super Mario World, you can actually use the D-pad to manipulate your falling and rising speeds. Uh, for example... Uh, wait a minute. Is this this place? Yeah, this is actually a spot, so backing up a little bit. Uh, there's actually a really cool thing about this game that I need to go over, but we don't actually need to go over it yet because we haven't missed anything. Um, if you miss a power, uh, not a power, but collectible, it's actually super easy to hop back into a level and get it and then leave the level, uh, but we haven't needed it to you yet. This is a maze, but your general rule of thumb for this is just head top right? As much as possible. Because it's in the upper right corner, so just keep going up right and you'll eventually hit it. One of these in the second world, I actually cleared like ridiculously fast, and I don't, I don't even know how. Like, it was just over immediately, practically. It's like, okay, that was surprisingly easy. But if I'm not mistaken, I'm probably mistaken though, uh, it, this is the only bonus level in this area. I don't think there's a second one. At least that I remember. Okay. Now we have to find On Guard again. But, but I think it's down here. Yeah, On Guard's back down here. 
Uh, basically, I don't know why they make you refine on guard, but you actually do. And you actually... Oh, frick. That sucks. Uh, you can't, can't actually get back on Anvil by these, um, which is actually really nice. Some places though you really can't. There's some areas where it's just really impossible to do so. The G is up there. Uh, just getting that because we can, KG, which I think is an element, but I don't remember which element it is. Here. I fricked up, actually. <laughs> uh, I completely fricked that up. If you start early enough and do the little charge thing, you can actually get the DK coin by doing that. But if you don't do that, there's actually a backup strap where you can actually just toss uh, a monkey up here and then get the DK coin that way. So there are two different ways, so if you miss it out, Miss out on that, and you're not completely screwed, so that's nice. Now, with the little end game roulettes, or end of level roulettes, they get really mean later on because they actually put DK coins in the roulettes. I think they start doing that in World 2, I want to say. Now, the last next level is actually where I got walled on my first attempt to record this. I could not for the life of me figure out where the first bonus area was. So hopefully we don't have a repeat of that, because I generally know where it is. Generally. <laughs> Keyword. <laughs> I was just being a dumb and forgot that here you get one up, right? Uh, I forgot on my previous playthrough that- oh wait, it's not there. Never mind! <laughs> okay, so I'm just being dumb again. But there's this place where you can actually do like a big jump. Oh, uh, by the way, the snake, uh, I don't remember his name. <laughs> so, uh, you're on your own in terms of what to call him. Yeah, this is the bonus barrel I forgot because I was so hung up on finding the DK coin in my practice run, and I totally forgot about where this bonus barrel was. Also, by the way, holding a B gives you more jump height. It's not really necessary. Just showing it off because I can. So, got these jumpy guys whose uh, names I don't remember. That's The snake is the easiest one to catch up to, by the way. If you lose the snake, you really don't have to worry too much about catching up to him because he is a snake. He can't move too fast. Though I think snakes in real life actually do move pretty quickly. Uh, just because they can, they can basically crawl. It's not crawling, it's slithering, but the point still stands. I think. I think these guys are called Clingers. I don't quite remember. Switching to Dixie because this will be easier. Um, okay. Now, I was just gonna make a comment because I said switching to Dixie. So I was gonna make a comment about like, I wonder if, like, what Retro's making. But it occurred to me this video is going up in July. Even, even though I'm recording it in April. Almost May, but April. So, it occurred to me I should, probably shouldn't be like, I wonder what's being announced at E3, because, like, E3 will be over by now. Yeah, I record these in advance because of school scheduling and life. I want to show this. So, uh, yeah, if you mess up a bonus barrel, you can just hop right back in, in a case like this. With the one with the cannonball, you just need to get the cannonball back and bring it back to the cannon. Uh, it's super forgiving when it comes to redoing bonus areas. I did not meet the screw up that time though. Um, that was not intended. Now, there's some times where I've done this where I just immediately zoom straight to the top. Other times I don't. I'm not sure what determines the pattern of the bugs, to be honest. Uh, for some reason it wasn't letting me- I was gonna jump and then hover over your left to try to get to the upper rope. It wouldn't let me jump off the rope for whatever reason, so that's why I got hit there. Staying closer to the middle is probably the best strategy now that I'm actually thinking about it. But yeah, see, for there it let me jump off the rope, but below it wouldn't. So I'm a little confused about that. Did not mean to throw Diddy. Um, now the DK coin is uh, right here. Okay, so that's it. That should be everything for this. By the way, um, for reference, for 100%, you actually need to clear the bonus levels. It's not good enough to just go in and go out. It's like returns rules, where you act 
have to actually clear it. I think DKC 1, you only have to clear the bonus like a couple times. But again, it's been like forever since I played that either. This is the first boss of the game. He throws eggs at you. He'll bounce a bit and then stop. Pick up the egg, he'll fly towards you. And <laughs> you don't even need to throw it at him. That's the funny part with this boss. You do not even need to throw the egg at him. You just have to kind of let him run into you. I've actually done that. Like, see, watch. Like, this boss is weird. Like, I know it's the first level, so it kind of makes sense to have an easy boss, but still, like, jeez. <laughs> it's too easy. I think he takes five hits or three... No, that was the third hit, so either four hits or five hits. Oh, we got good RNG and then bad RNG uh, immediately following it. Because the egg fell at the exact place that he was... Uh, oh, well, oh, well, oh, blah, I can't talk. Five hits, then. But anyway, as I was saying, I got bad RNG because he flew it. The egg fell into it. So if we go over here, we have the exclamation point and the DK coin for the world. Not just for the level, but for the world. Crocodile Cauldron... Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should be starting this level, to be completely honest. Actually, this level's not too bad. I can rush through this. This one's easy. It's one... the next one that was kicking my butt in practice. By the way, the little sides of the platforms, you know, Breath of the Wild logic kicking in, uh, those aren't solid. <laughs> So don't try to aim for those, I discovered. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I missed a K. So it's just, oh. Uh-huh. So we are actually introduced to a new animal buddy in this part, I think. Wait a minute. Where's the... Wait a minute. I'm, I'm a little confused, because there's a can, but like, where? Okay, that was really dumb. First death, and it was a really anticlimactic one. But hey, we made it to the midpoint, so that's all that really matters. I'm trying to remember, where did you get the cannon? Also, by the way, those guys are jerks. Just saying. Those guys are total jerks. Maybe starting to send this video wasn't the best idea. It's like, what are... But it's like, there's a can- you need a cannonball to get through here, but I don't remember where it was. Cause that's just bananas. Oh, it's that one. Okay, here we go. Back on track. This is also something I need to go over. Uh, these videos aren't gonna be 20 minutes, cause I know from previous projects I tried to keep to about 20 minutes. Uh, for this LP, the, uh, time, like, frame for each video is gonna be probably closer to 20 to 25, just because I feel like later on in the game, we're not gonna get anything done in 20 minutes. Because we're just gonna hit a wall. By the way, this is a spider. For some reason, I have arachnophobia, but this guy doesn't bother me. Um... Fun fact. It, well, actually, he does bother me, but not because he's a spider, because his level designs often suck. <laughs> As we'll see, end game. So, foreshadowing. Okay, so A creates platforms, Y attacks. So keep that in mind. Even though I'm thinking we're probably gonna finish like 21 minutes in this video, which is in the future, I don't think we're gonna be able to stick to a uh, strict schedule per se. Um, yeah, I know this is not efficient, but oh well. And up here should be the second bonus barrel. Is there a third in this level, or am I thinking of a different level? I might be thinking of the next one. Okay, um... This one's easy. Actually, it's easier to do that than to curve it. I <laughs> didn't even need that third or fourth platform, which whatever number it was. And there's G. Uh, okay. What else? Uh, oh yeah, there is a- th shoot. Welp. <laughs> that sucked. But hey, we got the, um... 
the, the tag move, so we don't have to worry about that. If you need an animal buddy for a bonus stage, they supply it for you. So don't worry if you accidentally lose it uh, right before the bonus because they'll give it to you in the actual bonus. Some you need the animal buddies to get into, this one you don't. That should be all the bonus levels. And we actually got the one up because we kind of cheesed that. And we got another banana coin. That's a lot of coins. <laughs> More coins than we actually need. Considering uh, we can't even save right now because, well, there's nowhere to save. So, to end off, because I said 25 minutes and we're only at 20 minutes, like flat. Give them a big hand, folks. Good evening, I'm Swanky Kong, and blah 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 blah. So, he gives you various, um, like, uh, first off a level. <laughs> we just did it. So he basically asks you a bunch of, uh, questions about the world. Okay, I'm confused, because I got sworn I hit five times. Well, basically, he gives you extra lives if you clear his questions. So, it's kind of a cool little way to get more lives. Not really necessary at the moment. Clubus Kiosk. Um, we can't do this yet, but I'm gonna show it. This is Clubba. Uh, you actually get to the bonus area by giving him the creme coins. So those are your bonus levels, but we can't actually do those yet. Next time is Cannon's Claim. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you join me next time for more Donkey Kong Country 2 Days Conquest.